Did you know that you can play X-Plane 11 and a lot of different virtual reality games on Steam straight on a mobile VR headset? Yes, that's actually possible. With a software called Riftcat V-Ridge, it's possible to use only a plastic cheap virtual reality headset together with a smartphone and get almost the same level of immersion, especially in a flight simulator like X-Plane 11. Guys, in this video I'm going to show you how you can fly around in X-Plane 11 with Riftcat V-Ridge software using a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus together with a Gear VR headset. But remember, you can do this on way cheaper smartphones and way cheaper VR headsets as well. What's up guys, welcome back. Yes, mobile VR for the first time ever here on Viber. I know I am a big HTC Vive and Oculus Rift fanboy. I play with those headsets almost daily and I've never really been into mobile VR. I don't know why, but I haven't been really attracted by the content. You know, we have those Gear VR headsets, we have Daydream, but there is no content that is even close to the Steam VR game games we have already for the HTC Vive or Oculus Rift. But thanks to Merp TV, a very good friend of mine, a YouTuber that you probably already know about, he made a video about a software called Riftcat V-Ridge that allows us to play Steam VR games on a mobile VR headset. And that is quite new to me, I had no idea and I especially had no idea that it works so well. So I decided I'm gonna give this a try and to make it even more extreme I decided that I'm gonna do this with the X-Plane 11 well to see if I can play the most advanced virtual reality flight simulator on a cheap Samsung Gear VR headset. Well guys I gotta tell you it works much better than you will ever expect. I'm so surprised and that's why today I can honestly hype up this software because I really think it works way beyond my expectation. And no this is not a promotional video I haven't got paid for it but I actually got five keys to this software that I'm gonna give away to you guys this weekend so please leave any comment under this video and tell me that you would like to try out Riftcat and I will pick five random winners from the comments under this video that will receive this software for free later on this week. So guys join me and I'm gonna show you how I start this up, how I make it to work and how fun it is to actually play X-Plane 11 in virtual reality on a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus with a Gear VR headset. Let's go! So guys, let's get started. We're gonna fly in X-Plane 11 VR on a Samsung S8 Plus, uh, well, a mobile headset. And guys, it's actually possible. That is so cool and it runs really, really well, actually. So first off, I'm not gonna go through every little step in this tutorial because I don't think it's needed the installation and everything of the RiftCat software, the V-Ridge software that you're gonna use on your smartphone and also on your computer, it's quite straightforward. So I'm just gonna go through a few steps and then we are just gonna jump into X-Plane 11 VR. So first of all, you're gonna need the software and you can download it from riftcat.com slash V-Ridge and that is the V-Ridge software. I've already done so, I have actually started off already and I have the full version, I paid $15 for it and I really recommend you to do so if you're not one of the winners in my uh, giveaway in this video, I'm gonna talk about it later on. If you do not win, I would recommend you to go into the video description down here below, click on the link and grab the software and yes, I get 20% from a commission from that sale. So if you would like to support me, I would really, really appreciate that. So anyway, we're gonna jump into the Riftcat client or the V-Ridge software. And as you can see, we can use the Wi-Fi or the USB connection. And of course, USB connection is gonna work better. You're gonna get some better bandwidth and especially better latency. But if you're using a Samsung Gear VR headset, that's not possible, not for now actually, because the USB is not able to transmit data 
or the streaming data if you're using the, the mobile in this uh, Gear VR headset. And that is really strange. It's quite limited. If you're using some other, you know, Chinese brands of the those mobile VR headset, you can probably do that, but not with the Gear VR, not for now. Maybe there are some tweaks for that, but I, I cannot find any. So I'm gonna use the Wi-Fi. And if you're using Wi-Fi, use the five gigahertz Wi-Fi, not the 2.4 default, because the five uh, gigahertz is much faster. So I'm using the five gigahertz and I'm just gonna click on Wi-Fi and it's, and it's just finding my phone right away. So let's click yes. And now we're connected. As you can see, I'm on full version of unlimited time. So you only pay once, it's $15. I think you paid only once and you have that software forever. And that is so cool. You're gonna see that in a moment. Anyway, before we jump in, uh, I'm gonna uh, just show you the configuration here. Uh, if you click on the configuration and go into VRich settings, you're gonna see that there are a lot of settings here and they're quite crucial depending on well, what performance you got. So you have to like tweak it a little bit for your needs and uh, maybe the first time it's gonna be very bad latency or bad image quality or some artifacts and so. So you will need to customize that for your needs. And my settings that I'm using are actually uh, just using a 1080p uh, resolution. I'm doing it with the 12 megabytes per second of uh, bitrate, a render scale. Uh, let's put it on 125. You can actually bump it up much higher than that. Render scale is almost, it was kind of like a super sampling way. So it gets a little bit sharper in the headset. Also, we, you have presets, so you can uh, put it on low, medium, high, or very high. For example, I could put it on high, and that would be also well, almost my setting. And uh, it's 1080p, and this quality bar here, I would actually not put it higher than 6 or maybe 7. I'm gonna have it on 6 for this video, because the more quality you put into this, uh, the more it's gonna add the latency and latency is kind of a delay even though you're not noticing it it's gonna be still be there so when you're moving your head it's gonna be like a very very small delay between your movement and that actual image moving with you and that is bad and if you have it way too much up and maybe even turn on the resolution to the highest one the 4040p well, the latency could be like half a second and that is like ridiculous. It's impossible to play in virtual reality with that latency. So stick to some kind of, well, medium settings. I, I have it, like I said, on 1080p and uh, uh, quality settings on six. Let's have it on this. Also, uh, there is actually an option here. It's called streaming mode. And I prefer to have it on prevent frame loss so we don't get any stutters when we move our head very fast. And it kind of prevents that. I don't know how it does that, but it actually works great so you don't get those stutters. Because without this option, which is not on default, you can actually get some stutters if there's a lot of things happening in the image at the same time. So I have it on prevent frame loss and I think it's gonna work great. Also, we have a recenter view hotkey and that is very good to remember because, uh, well, you are gonna need to recenter yourself depending on, especially when you start off the um, Explain 11 VR or some other game, for example, for the first time, you may be totally misaligned. So you will need to recenter yourself. So I have it on Alt plus uh, Control Shift plus A. So it's very easy to just do that with your hand. And of course, when you're playing in virtual reality with this kind of a method and this software, you are gonna probably sit down and play in front of your computer and your keyboard because you cannot do full room scale and not use any VR controller. So this is only for sitting down games. So it's very easy to recenter your view any second. You can probably map that into some kind of gamepad or whatever, or some button on your um, uh, joystick because I am gonna use a joystick of course uh, this is the first time I'm gonna use the joystick in explain 11 I've never done that before I've only played it with the VR controller so far further on we have a tracking prediction and I have it only on default value 52 milliseconds uh, you can get some faster response or less jitter and it's like, kind of like a balanced thing in between, but I think that it works well on the default setting. You can, of course, customize that and try it for yourself. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is. And also we have an IPD adjustment and scale adjustment. I have not touched those settings, so they are on default and I think it works great. 
So guys, I think we're gonna go with those settings and uh, as you can see now we're on custom because I changed to the advanced video settings, but I think it's gonna work quite well. So let's click on OK and I forgot to add that I have already started off the V-Ridge software on my mobile, my Samsung S8 Plus mobile or smartphone and all I can see right now is the V-Ridge uh, splash screen or it looks kind of like a Steam VR environment. Uh, with some kind of, uh, yeah, like a floor and some stuff flying around. And uh, it says connected waiting for Steam VR. Turn on Steam VR by clicking play button in the Riftcat application. So this is what I see only. So here is the play button and we're gonna start off Steam VR. And first off, you will not be able to uh, start off uh, explain 11 this way unfortunately because explain 11 VR this current beta version is only able to start off well in VR if you have not the VR version enabled and that is really weird I don't know why it is this way but it, it is this way so <laughs> so sorry guys I'm just gonna show you that this actually works straight from the box out of the box and as you can see well you're not gonna see any latency on this uh, steam vr mirror view i wish i could show you the latency if, or some delay if you see any but i don't think there is any delay at all actually it just works so anyway i'm gonna minimize this screen and problem is if we start off uh, explain 11 um like this just straight from Steam VR, you're gonna see what happens. If I just click OK and it's just gonna start off the game. If you have the VR mode enabled in the game, well, this is actually just gonna crash and it is really bad. But for me, I have not enabled the setting yet. So, what we're gonna do first is to go into uh, the settings and I'm gonna show you some stuff here. So let's jump into settings and we're gonna uh, take a look at my rendering options. First off, I'm gonna lower it down a little bit just for this video. I'm gonna use it on medium, on the visual effects and anti-lacing, let's put it on four, I think. Uh, texture quality is on maximum. I usually have some higher settings, but now I'm a little bit worried that it would be too much of details running it with a mobile headset, so. Um, also, I'm gonna lower down the number of world objects to medium only and no reflections and never use that. If you haven't seen my performance video or performance tutorial, uh, I did that one week ago. I really recommend you to watch that because I made a lot of tweaks and plugins and some other cool stuff that actually can double your frame rate in Explain 11 VR. So check that video out. Anyway, uh, what we need to do more here is to go into the VR hardware tab. This is how it's gonna look the first time you actually start off Explained 11 if you haven't uh, played it uh, early. The VR mode is not gonna be enabled. So so here's here comes the thing. Um, thing is that enable VR more mo mouse cursor was actually uh, added into the latest uh, beta VR2 beta I think it's called the latest version it was just released a couple of days ago. So now we can finally have a mouse in this simulator and that helps a lot and that is well th it's thanks to that mouse cursor that we actually can run explain 11 on a mobile headset like this because that would not be possible otherwise because yes of course i'm gonna use my hotas 4 joystick to steer the airplane but there are a lot of navigation settings especially the menus that you need to navigate through and that's not possible if the mouse is not working but so now it, the mouse is going to work in vr and that is awesome so have this enable if it's not enabled by default you really need to tick that and here is the enable vr hardware so the thing is if i just turn this on we'll see what happens here's the thing the game just crashes and that is a problem and uh, well I don't know how I'm gonna say it but you have to unfortunately close down Steam VR and then uh, start off uh, Explain 11 again so we're gonna do that we're gonna quit Steam VR and we're gonna start it off again and the problem is when you're quitting Steam VR you're actually also quitting this V-Ridge software you can of course quit it through the software as well so what we're gonna do now instead is to just go into Steam 
again and start off the X-Plane 11 while not having VR on. So I actually only see the connecting, uh, waiting for Steam VR. Well, that's strange, I shouldn't even be connected uh, right now. But anyway, uh, oh yes, I am, of course, but the Steam VR is not running. So let's start off X-Plane 11 and we're gonna see what happens this time. I hope that the VR options has been saved now uh, because if those VR options has been saved, nope, they have not been saved. So you're gonna have to go to the settings, again, VR hardware, and uh, now enable the VR hardware. And what happens now is that the Steam VR is gonna start up and now it's gonna work. It's, it's very strange, but it is this way and we really need to do it this way. As you can see, Steam VR is starting up. Uh, the VRidge is now running, as it this uh, pop-up says. And we have our X-Plane 11 window here. And as you can see, it's tracking very, very nice right now. Here is the game image and here is the headset mirror. I think I'm just gonna, I, I may need to close this headset mirror to gain some more performance actually, because this is just a double view of all what we already see. So I'm just gonna do like this to have it a little bit more uh, bigger. And I gotta tell you, this looks sharp. I think, I mean, the resolution uh, using an uh, Samsung S Plus, S8 uh, Plus is quite amazing, to be honest. It's, it looks more sharp than it does on an HTC Vive. I don't know how much you can see right now uh, on your screen, but I can clearly read this. So, well, I'm just gonna start off the flight now. Let's go, guys. So guys, we are at LaGuardia in New York and we're gonna take off in a second. Look at this. Wow, this is so cool. I'm using a Samsung S8 Plus smartphone and I gotta tell you, it looks lovely. So first of all, uh, as you can probably understand already, you cannot do positional tracking with this. So whenever I move, to the left, to the right, to the front. I'm not gonna move at all. The only thing we can do is to look around because there is no positional tracking in mobile VR headsets. Not, uh, well, as you, we are used to with the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift. But still, we can look around and I think it, it really is immersive. It's gonna be a little bit, well, it's gonna move a little bit around. It's not gonna be perfectly still because the tracking is dependent on the mobile gyroscope, but still, the 3D effect with 3D vision is there, and the immersion is really nice. So, in this current beta version, we have uh, the mouse support now, so we can do everything with the mouse. And uh, first off, we can zoom in also with the mouse. Take a look at that. If I just used to. If I just use the scroll uh, scroll wheel, I can move around, I can read all the gauges very closely because, I mean, the graphics or the sharpness is not going to be perfect using this headset, the mobile headset. It's going to be a little bit more blurry than on the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, but it's still very, I mean, it's very detailed. I can still see stuff. I cannot read everything until I go like this with the zoom but it still works great with the zoom I think so yeah we're gonna just start off and we're gonna take off from LaGuardia we're gonna fly around a little bit in New York and we're gonna see how it performs so guys we can actually remove uh, the yoke here by clicking on it just like that because we can interact with everything here so I'm just gonna remove it and I'm gonna uh, remove the parking brake and the no throttle yet, please, thank you. And then we're gonna put the yoke back. And as you can see, if I move my joystick, I'm gonna move the yoke. So I'm not using any controllers, just like I used to with the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift, but still, it's awesome. So, well, guys, let's do full throttle. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of crosswind right now, I think. But still, wow. Guys, this is very fluid, this is very smooth. It's not perfectly smooth, but it is smooth, I mean... 
of being a VR mobile headset. It's it's quite amazing. Graphics are really really nice in this simulator. And even though it's not gonna be so sharp as you are used to on your HTC Vive and Oculus Rift, I think this is for every one of you that are used to play Explain 11 in well on your PC monitor and maybe you don't have any virtual reality headset yet and you just want to well get the feeling of how it feels to just sit inside of the airplane to get that depth feeling you know the immersion I think you really should try this the Ridge uh, Rift Cat software <laughs> you're gonna be amazed because it really runs great I mean it needs only 60 frames per second to run fully fluid and the latency is good and I don't know if my frame rate is perfectly 60 frames Let, let's check it yes yeah it's almost 56 frames per second up in the left corner and the right corner as well as you see 57 so it's almost fully fluid but I still think it's very nice I don't feel any stutters and so and the lag is actually quite minimal as well the lag when I turn my head it's almost perfect and yes that's that depends a lot if you well if you use too high settings and too high resolution to get some more better quality and detail you will probably lose some more latency whoa I'm stalling almost sorry I'm not used to use my Hotas joystick because I've been using the VR controller so far in this simulator wow <laughs> this is so cool I've said it before this is the coolest the best the most realistic flight simulator out there and in VR it's just amazing Wow. This uh, this uh, New York Sandry is a custom Sandry. Actually, it's a payware. It's called New York City XP. It's around 25 or 30 bucks. And so, uh, New York City will not look like this if you just play the default version of X Plane 11 without any add-ons. But I can highly recommend you to go for this uh, Sandry because I think it looks lovely. It's very detailed, you have all the big buildings and all the... I mean, it's quite quite great looking, it's almost photorealistic. Also, I can realign myself because the tracking is very good, but sometimes you get a little bit misaligned, of course, and that is because of the gyroscope, gyroscope on the mobile, and you get a little bit disaligned, so you have to realign yourself, and it is a little bit glitchy, I don't know why, but right now, if I do the... If I push the control shift out and A, well, I'm gonna be aligned like this, and that is so weird. So I have to look like over there and then look forward, and then I'm gonna be perfectly aligned again. Uh, maybe I did something wrong with the ca calibration in the beginning, but you're supposed to be able to reseat yourself at any time with that shortcut. You can put any shortcut, of course, as you want. And you can probably also use some uh, mappings for your joystick to recalibrate yourself and so wow I don't know if you can see this but it really feels smooth it really feels smooth and I'm sorry I cannot show you the mobile image because it was just too demanding for the mobile and also for the Wi-Fi to show both to both stream this image and also stream the well, like a mirror screen from the mobile, so I was not able to screen, stream that for you here. But I can tell you that it's almost the same image you are seeing in your mobile headset, in this mobile view or VR view that I'm seeing right now. The graphics are the same. It's not that sharp, it's not super sharp, but still, as I said, you can use the mouse cursor to just zoom in on everything you need to, well, take a look at you can of course zoom in uh, outside and take a look at the buildings well like that for example let's have a look at the New York City front side I mean it looks so cool the mouse support really really adds a lot into this VR well version of the X-Plane 11 
it really helps out so much more. It's so easy to navigate with everything. You don't need to reach out for stuff if you're using the HTC Vive or Oculus Rift. And of course, we don't have any controllers, so we have to use something to navigate, to change everything here, all the settings, all the buttons and so. And of course, we're gonna use the mouse this time. And also, you can change your seating by pushing down and up and to the sides on your keyboard as well. So if you want a different view, like that maybe, whoa, sorry, whoa, watch out. Oh, we made it, that was really, really close. So you can of course use the keyboard to change the view and that is with the arrows, up, down, left and right. <laughs> this is so cool. It looks lovely. So, well guys, I think we're just gonna jump into the studio and I would like to talk a little bit more about this software that gives us VR on the mobile and also we're gonna talk a little bit about the giveaway I have for you guys. I have five steam keys to this software so you can get it for free and try this out on your smartphone. So guys, come on, let's go. So, well, yes, I know it's a mobile VR solution. It's quite cheap and poor compared with the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift. It has no room scale support. It has no positional tracking. It has no controllers. But, I mean, in simulators like this, like the x 11 or maybe Project Cars 2 and many other games that you can use a racing wheel, a joystick or maybe the keyboard and mouse. Think about all the Vorpex games out there that you actually could play with a cheap smartphone and a even cheaper virtual reality headset from eBay. Wow, I think this is quite amazing if they think about it. There's so many people out there that have no idea how virtual reality feels. Well, that cheap content that you get with the Gear VR is really not encouraging, I think, to make people to invest so much money into much more expensive virtual reality headsets. So by using this software, people can finally play some virtual reality games well, almost for free, just to try out how it feels. And yes, most of the virtual reality games with room scale and controller support, it's not gonna be possible, of course, but there are so many simulators, there are so many Vorpex games, there are so many other games that you, of course, can try. And the software is not free, no, it costs around $15 and you get a lifetime license. If you don't buy the software, you can try it for free, but you can only try it for, I think it's five or 10 minutes, then it's automatically disconnecting the smartphone from the PC. And if you would really like to try out this software to be able to play x 11 in virtual reality, I think you need much more than 10 minutes to, to, to really get that feeling. So, well, I'm gonna give you the link in the video description down here below where you can download this software and yes it's an affiliate link so guys if you buy this software by this link you're supporting me as well i think it's like 20 percent or something i get a little bit of commission so i would really appreciate your support and also i have five keys that i'm gonna give away to five random guys that are commenting this video and i'm gonna announce the winners on uh, Saturday or Sunday, I think it's gonna be this weekend at least. So, well, what more to say, most of you are probably very concerned about the lag. And yes, there is a lag, it's not gonna be lag free. I know it's much better using the USB cable and it's almost lag free that way. I only used the Wi-Fi method, the transmission with Wi-Fi, it was five gigahertz Wi-Fi and it was very good, but it was not perfect. I could still feel a little bit of delay when I was moving my head fast but if you are using a USB cable you're gonna get much better performance and you can probably also bump up the quality much more even go with max resolution this way but remember if you have a Gear VR headset you're not able to do that because if you are connecting your smartphone to your Gear VR headset 
that output for the USB cable is not transmitting the data from your computer to, to the mobile phone in the same way. So it's not possible to transmit the video signal through that USB cable. You can do that when you are connecting your smartphone directly with a cable to your, um, to your PC or by using some other virtual reality headset, those cheap headsets you can find on eBay or wherever. But try this out, it's $15 guys. And if you already have a smartphone, I mean, I assume that most of us have a smartphone at home, at least maybe a Samsung S5 or S6 or something. I'm not sure about the iOS, those Apple uh, iPhones and everything. I'm not sure if that's supported, but with an Android uh, smartphone, you can get this to run with any plastic or even paper headset or even something you do by yourself at home and you will get that 3D feeling, that VR immersion. If you buy a more expensive headset like the Gear VR, you're gonna get a better field of view, the optics are better of course, so the sweet spot is gonna be a little bit better and of course the quality of it is gonna be much better than a $5 eBay headset. But still, it almost works the same way, the performance is gonna be exactly the same. So give it a try. Rift Rich, guys, I'm gonna try more games with this. Even though I have two other virtual reality headsets, I think this is a cool idea and I'm really curious how this performed in uh, racing games, for example. So expect some more videos uh, about this software and uh, how it's working with Steam VR games further on, probably later this week uh, when I have my giveaway for you guys. So, guys. Thank you so much for watching, please leave a like under this video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. Uh, thank you so much for all your support, I really hope you enjoy my content. Uh, there's been a little delay between my videos lately because I work way too much, but I promise I will do better. You can expect more videos coming up the upcoming 10-15 days because I have almost no work at all, so I'm gonna have a lot of days at home to just create some great content for you out there. Guys, don't, don't forget the link in the description to the Riftcat software and also don't forget to comment to have a chance to win the software for free. I have five keys from the creators. Take care for now and see you hopefully tomorrow again. Cheers!